Everybody knows that displacing stuff in Photoshop sucks. The workflow is clunky, there's so many extra steps, and you have to monotonously test and reapply the displacement map all to get some subpar results half of the time. Well, we fixed that over here at Duran Supply. This is without a doubt my favorite add-on or plugin for Photoshop as of recently. It's made the distressing and displacing process not only so much easier, but also so much fun. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com where I'll help you design smarter, not harder. This is the Mob Chain plugin for Photoshop, my number one tool for anything distress and displacement. First of all, why displacement? Well, it's a great way to add some flair to your text or your imagery. You can add scanner-like effects, grunge and distress, glitched and glass effects. Here's how the displace filter currently works in Photoshop. Let's say you want to distress some type. So you'd go up to filter, distort, and then displace. From here, you choose the amount of displacement that you want. You press OK and it prompts you with choosing a displacement map. And that displacement map has to be a PSD file. So let's say I choose this displacement map right here, which is pretty much just a paper texture. I'll go ahead and click open. It's going to distress my type according to that texture. And here's what that displacement map actually looks like. You see, it's just some grainy paper texture in here. So the displacement map is looking at all these contours of different black and white values and relaying that information into the type here to distress it. But to simplify that, basically, Basically, the neutral state here would be no displacement, obviously, and that would look like a 50% gray solid. So if this entire displacement map was just a solid 50% gray, like this displacement map here, we would actually have no effect on the type. So let me go ahead and redo this displacement with that solid 50% gray displacement map. As you can see, we're getting no displacement on this type. See, this is the neutral state. But as you start shifting the displacement map towards black or towards white, the displacement starts to follow those values. So let's say I turn half of this displacement displacement map into pure black and then I go ahead and redo the displacement on this type. We can see that the area of black within the displacement map is getting translated onto our type here or displacing it downwards. Now if I made that same part of the displacement map white instead of black and then I save this and redid the displacement map, you'll see that it is displacing that same piece of type in the same way except the reverse. It is now going upwards. Now this is a very crude example obviously but the gist of it is that your neutral state of displacement is going to be this 50% gray and wherever there's white in your displacement map, it is going to shift that piece of your layer up and wherever there's black, it is going to shift that piece of your layer down. So now you can imagine what happens when we start introducing things like gradients and textures where there's a lot more of an interesting transition between the black, white, and gray values. So back in my displacement map here, if I just throw say a Gaussian blur on this to get sort of a gradient going between the 50% neutral gray solid and the black part of the displacement, I go ahead and save this and redo the displacement filter. We now see that transition of displacement is more gradual obviously because we have a gradual gradient going on in that displacement map. We can see with the displacement map overlaid on top of this type, as we go from that neutral state of gray to that black, the text gradually starts to decline and displace downwards. By taking advantage of these transitions from black to gray to white values within our displacement map, we can get some really cool results. So even just throwing noise onto our displacement map here, I'll save that and redo the displacement. Take a look at how that affects our type here. So when we added that noise, it's pretty much randomizing all these tiny specks of light and dark shades within our displacement map. And all these tiny little details and the ups and downs of value in this noise is getting translated into our distressed type here. And that's why we're getting this really cool noisy look across our entire piece of type. So each little pixel on the noise of our displacement map is displacing that respective pixel of our type here up or down. So that's pretty cool. But now the problem is, this workflow sucks. There's too much back and forth. It's hard to tell what's gonna affect what and where. And it's a lot of guesswork when you're trying to get more of a customized look. But now, enter. Mob chain. This is a plugin that streamlines that whole process and basically you can now formulate and edit your displacement maps and see how they affect your graphic in real time. Here's how it works. You open up the plugin within plugin and then mob chain, simply select the layer that you want to distress and click on link map. And now you have your displacement map here at that neutral gray. And we also have a little reference to see where the stuff was on our canvas, but we don't want that to be a part of the actual displacement, obviously. So we could just go ahead and turn these both off for now. All we want is that foreground color of 50% gray. Now we can get a side-by-side -side view by going up to window, arrange, and then we can choose to put these side-by-side -side either horizontally or vertically. I'm gonna go ahead and choose 
horizontal here. I'm also going to drag the plugin dialog into my panel here. And now any change I make here in the displacement document is going to immediately reflect into the parent document. So say I quickly take a grunge brush and just start painting along the center of this document. It's going to update that almost instantly into our parent document and start distressing that type. And it just looks really cool already. Boom, pretty straightforward. So I'm painting in black with this noisy brush and that's going to displace the type downwards this way. I can also switch the color to white, start painting around here and that's gonna displace it in the opposite way. Already it's looking sick, but I can even go in here into the mob chain dialog and start messing with the Y and the X offset. See the results of that in real time. So I can turn the X offset all the way up to like 400, get some really cool sort of broken scanner effects here. Or I could do the same by isolating the Y offset, just turning that one all the way up. Some pretty interesting results here as well. You can also link these sliders by clicking on the link sliders checkbox, and that is going to link these sliders. So it's gonna make the intensity of whatever you set one of them for both of them. And so instantly, that's just a wow for me. I love it. This thing is fucking awesome. The best part about this is that I've included over 30 displacement brushes for you to use to get some really cool, unique, and textured displacement within your type or your images. So what I just displayed here was one of the soft noise brushes. I'm gonna go ahead and click on some other ones and show you how those look. This one right here is a fabric texture, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint in with that fabric displaced brush. And we get this nice sort of cotton texture displacement on our type. We've also got a halftone displacement, which is really cool. So I'm gonna click on the halftone brush and start painting in here with that. Definitely something you're gonna wanna try out. We can also change the size of the actual halftone dots by opening up the brush settings here by clicking on that button, going to the texture option and changing the scale to whatever you want. So let's say I wanted those halftone dots a little smaller, I turn the scale down. And now when I paint with this, we get those smaller dots. Okay, pretty cool. We've also got some line displacements here, like the diagonal line displacement brush. We've also got vertical lines and we have horizontal lines, all of which look really, really cool. And these are some great ways to add some spice to your type. Let's try out one more, which I really like, which is the molecular displaced brush. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint in with that here. That is pretty damn cool. Again, I can change the X or the Y offset. And I can also change, again, the scale of this pattern when I paint it in. So say I want sort of a smaller grain, I'll just go into the brush settings, go to texture and turn the scale of this down. And now when I paint in with this brush, we get a smaller scale. And lastly, one of my favorites, this was actually, I I think a default brush within Photoshop, which I had to add in here just in case you don't have it. Maybe you have an outdated version of Photoshop or something, I don't know. But these are just amazing. So go ahead and use the Supreme Splatter, Splatter Brush, whatever. It's by Kyle, whoever Kyle is. Again, instantly some really cool stuff going on here with these brushes. And as I move the displacement layer in our displacement document, it updates that in real time into our parent document. So in just about six clicks total, this is the result that you get. Super cool. Pretty unbelievably easy to get results this cool in such a short amount of time. I'm gonna give some more tips and tricks on this in a second here. To install all of this is super easy. Literally all you do is go ahead and click on the .ccx file and open that up, install that locally, and also click on the .abr file for the brushes. Once you've done that, you'll have all the displacement brushes within your brush panel. And for the plugin, again, all you do is go up to plugins, go to mob chain plugin and just click on link map. That's gonna make your displacement map. You have this reference here to see where your stuff is when you have these two documents side by side, which you do again by going up to window, arrange, and then choosing if you want it horizontally or vertically side by side. We'll go ahead and turn off these reference layers so it's not affecting the actual displacement of our type. By default, mob chain is going to update the displacement map into your parent document after every action you do. So let's say I just do a brush stroke here. It's going to auto automatically update that displacement onto my type. However, if you're working in a larger document with higher pixel dimensions or a higher DPI, then this might become a little bit of a slow process. Or that could be the case if you just have a slower computer. To counteract that, you can go into the settings of the mob chain plugin by clicking on this gear icon. And from here, you could drag up the interval to update the tick rate of how often the displacement map gets updated. This is gonna help if you find that the plugin is getting a little laggy or it's maybe messing with your workflow a bit. Just go ahead and turn that interval up. Or alternatively, you could just change the sync mode entirely from auto to manual. This way it updates whenever you want it to update. You can also click on this checkbox here to use H on your keyboard as a hotkey for updating the displacement map. And honestly, I prefer this because I tend to work in larger pixel dimensions. And also it's just a bit of a smoother workflow to be able to update the displacement map when I want to update it versus having it automatically update after every like brush stroke I do. So having this set to manual and using the H shortcut gives a little more room for error and it's just a smoother workflow for me personally. But I would recommend, you know, just experimenting with this and see what fits your play style the best.
One really cool thing here also is that the layer that you're displacing is turned into a smart object prior to the displacement. So you can actually go back into that layer and change the type or change the layout or anything that you want. If you have the mob chain plugin set to auto update in the sync mode, then you're gonna have a bit of trouble switching the documents. If you do wanna update the actual content of your parrot document, you can either set the setting to manual here in the sync mode, or you can hold down alt and click on the link map button again. And that's also gonna set the sync mode to manual. Now I can go ahead and click on this parent document. And if I wanted to change the type, for example, I'd go ahead and click on that smart object and change the type to whatever I want. Go ahead and command S to save that. And back in our parent document, we can see that the same displacement map is now taking effect on this changed piece of type. So it's an extremely modular and intuitive workflow. And once you're done with the displacement map, all you do is close that document and you've got your displaced type or image neat and ready to go. So a few hotkeys here that you might find helpful if you're using manual mode like I am and you have this keyboard shortcut ticked on in these settings, then you just click on H to update your displacement map. I'm gonna make this guy look pretty funny here. Y'all ever seen that one scene in Interstellar where he's like, reaching through space time. That's what I'm gonna do right here, hold on. That doesn't look too good. When you're using brushes like the soft round brush or any of the brushes included with the displacement brushes, you might not wanna have it on full opacity because the higher the opacity, the stronger the displacement effect. So if I have this brush on full opacity, I just paint here with white, we see we get a pretty damn strong effect. But if I were to lower the opacity of this brush and do that same exact stroke, we get a bit of a lesser effect. So keeping the opacity of your brush in mind is a great idea, an easy way to control that is by using the numbers on your keyboard. As you have the brush tool selected, just by clicking two, three, five, or whatever number on your number pad, you could easily change the opacity of your brush. And trust me, that is really going to come in handy. Another hotkey you wanna take note of is switching between white and black in your color palette. So like I said earlier, white is going to move things up and black is going to move things down. And depending on the effect you want, you might wanna use white or black. And an easy way to switch between those is by pressing D on your keyboard, that's going to reset set your palette to just black and white. If you wanna switch between the primary and secondary colors in your palette, you press X on your keyboard and that's gonna switch your primary and secondary colors in your palette. So quickly switch from black to white to black to white, you know, do whatever you want with that. Really, really useful shortcut. And finally, when you're using the brushes to displace, you're probably gonna to wanna to be able to change the size of your brush on the fly and it's a very easy way to do that and it's just by using the brackets on your keyboard. The left and right bracket are going to respectively increase or decrease the size of your brush. It's going to speed up your workflow a ton to just use the brackets on your keyboard to change the size of your brush rather than using the actual brush size slider here. You can also just hold down Alt and Control on your keyboard and then drag to the left or the right to change the size of your brush. You can see exactly how big or small your brush is going to be with this little module here. If you drag up or down, you can actually change the opacity of your brush as well. That's a very neat way to quickly adjust settings about your brush. Extremely useful tips for painting in your displacement map. This brush is just amazing, by the way. The light soft, the noise light soft. You gotta try this shit out, man. Despite the brushes being extremely fun to use, you're not limited to those at all. You can still drag in any other texture that you wanna use for your displacement map. So you can just go online and go to Pexels or go to Texture Labs, find you some cool textures to use, like this cracked glass texture from Texture Labs. All I do is drag that into my displacement document. And as you can see, it automatically updates the displacement of our image in real time with the cracked glass displacement. And of course, I can turn up these sliders here to get more of a dramatic effect. I can move the texture around and find a nice spot for it. And that all updates live within in our parent document. So cracked glass texture is an obvious one. I mean, it's sort of just automatically cool. There's a ton of other textures that you can drag into here as well. I'm gonna drag this sort of water droplet texture into our displacement document. And that is again going to update the parent document displacement in real time. And that's a pretty cool effect, sort of like an underwater feel on this one. Obviously there's endless textures that you can try out for a varied effect. Let's say this little liquefied sort of marble-ish texture I could throw in here. That's pretty instantly cool. Maybe I can mask it into a circle, drag that wherever I want, like a sort of frosted glass effect. You can honestly just sit here for hours and go on texturefabric.com or any other of your favorite texture sites and just start dragging in textures into that displacement map document and watching it update in real time. It's just beautiful. You can very easily get some fun, customized results 
on your image or on your type. You can even get sort of like a broken scanner look just by painting in with a normal soft brush around different parts of the image. Obviously that's a little freaky, but you can see the implications for this. I've also got this really cool bubble brush that you can use as well. I'm really excited to see how you guys use this and how you leverage all these different brushes and textures to create some really cool effects. So that is Mob Chain, the high performance displacement plugin for Photoshop. Again, it's one of my favorite things to use as of recently. It's become a staple in my workflow. So it's definitely a must have if you're a grunge lover, if you love distressed type, distressed images and the like, I think you're gonna love it. Shout out to Banging Joints who collaborated with me on this product. You can download this today on my website for 15% off using the discount code YouTube15 at checkout. Super stoked to see what y'all make with this. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.